He was a rugby administrator in the city. He had organised for a game between Sydney and Russia. The way that day unfolded, Dad managed to get to the game, yeah. but was taken by ambulance to hospital because he just couldn't breathe. Uh, so I came back from overseas and I knew that it wasn't good when my brother met me at the airport. Um, I just took one look at his face and I knew. So it took me three days to get to hospital because the idea of this wonderful human being, being human, was something I found really difficult to face. The lung cancer that originally was the start was now right throughout his body. It had gone undiagnosed and, and he only had, at that point, three weeks to live. Did you spend much time with him in that, in that period? It's a really challenging thing to have somebody who, if I thought of one person in the world who was my greatest protector, it was him. And of course, by this stage, I was, I was a businesswoman. Mm. You know, I was running Cleo magazine. I was a, I was a fully fledged grown up. I found it so difficult to contemplate not having this man who, you know, in terms of protection, all, all he did was hugs and yeah. reassuring words and made me feel confident. He, he passed away three weeks later and, and when, when the parent becomes a child, it's still something that is a reminder that life is so short. Mm. You know, Dad was really vulnerable at the end and I'm so grateful that I was there right at the very last breath, holding his hand. The bizarre coincidence was that, you know, Dad was wanting to keep abreast of what was happening in rugby. You know, he'd brought this team out from Russia. Little did I know that the guy playing in the number five jersey that day was a guy by the name of Peter Fitzsimons. Huh. Dad was a big fan of someone who was writing for the Sydney Morning Herald. And here he is again, Peter Fitzsimons. <laughs> so I used to read Peter's columns to him in, in Dad's last days. The weird thing is, Dad had passed away and I took a week off work just trying to cope with the grief. And my first day back at work, I had to go via Channel 9. And I walked into the Channel 9 hair and makeup department and this person started to get, get up out of the chair and the producer said, oh, I don't know if you guys know each other. Peter Fitzsimons, this is Lisa Wilkinson. And I remember just putting my hand out and then seeing him stand up and up and up. And he looked at me and he had this big smile on his face and he said, are you Ray Wilkinson's daughter? And all of this strength that I'd been mustering for my first day back at work just fell away and I felt my own hand go limp. And he obviously saw my momentary pause and he just said something really lovely about Dad and how much everyone was shocked by his passing and he hoped I was okay. And I can remember just scrambling away. I just didn't want to deal with it. Lisa and Peter would meet up at a barbecue months later. And with a union seemingly decided by fate, they would tie the knot within two years. That day I walked down the aisle towards a wallaby and his best man was Nick Far Jones. <laughs> so I'm walking down the aisle towards these two wallabies. Yeah on the arm of my brother and I looked to the heavens and I said, Dad, you got me. <laughs> Rugby's now in my, in my blood, whether I like it or not. <laughs>